Hi, it's Matt here. Just thought I'd show you how I did the cloned video for Hazel. Um, so basically, I've got, I'm have got i going to do it very simply with two video clips, um, with the cajon and the bass. So here I am in DaVinci Resolve, which is very powerful and is absolutely free. And if you're uh, looking for a video package, then uh, recommend that. So here we go. Here is the cajon. probably not as smooth as it could be because I'm doing the recording on here as well um, and then over here I've got the bass okay um, neither of these is the actual sound that was used in the video um, because I, I recorded all of the separate um, audio streams and then mixed them together but this is just what the camera picked up and what it does allow you to do is sync it quite nicely um, I'm not going to bother with that I'm sure you know how to um, sync video and whatever at the moment. What I am going to do is I'm going to put this over the top and let's just pretend it's synced. Now when I go here you're only going to see the bass because it's on top of the cajon. So if I go here you oh, there you just see the cajon because there's no bass there. So what we need to do is hide some of this screen of the, of the bass recording to let me on the cajon kind of show through. So we want a mix of this one, if I just disable that, and the cajon there. Okay, so the first thing to say is you need your camera to be absolutely still in between takes. So I blue tacked mine to the corner um, of my bookcase, so I knew it wasn't going to move anywhere. Um, other things that you, I mean I did mine on my phone, I used the mirror view, so the front camera, because otherwise um, I couldn't actually um, use the touch screen on the phone could be on the back and it's blue tacked um, but you also need to tell tell your phone not to turn off after five minutes uh, not to change its brightness um, and depending on what software you're using to actually record it um, you may want to turn off auto white balance and things like that the other thing is if you've got different lighting in the room between different takes it's going to be very difficult um, where you piece together stuff you're going to have kind of auras around people and it's going to look really unrealistic so I blocked off all the light from this window um, and I just used the one bulb it did mean that the quality of the video wasn't great because the, the camera doesn't work brilliantly in low light um, you could set up I have got a um, proper lighting rig uh, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work with um, all the different shadows and things that'd be interesting to find out and I may have a go with that later but anyway once you've got your camera absolutely rock solid still um, when you press the touch screen don't press too hard in case you move it um, so take a couple of takes which is what we've got here so then all you do he says is you click on your clip and you go to the color tab right click add alpha output and the alpha um, is what controls how transparent um, the picture is so that's given us that blue blob there, and then if you drag the output from this to here, don't bother getting technical, just copy it. Um, I'm not entirely sure how everything on this screen works, I confess, um, but I know how to do what I need to do on it. So at the moment, everything on here is set to 100% or 0% transparent. So we're going to go to a selection box, and we're going to draw around myself with a pen. So. Just very simply, don't just draw around yourself, draw around where you're going to be. There we are. Ta -da! So now everything outside of that selection box is now transparent, which allows you to see the con video through the middle. So if we go back to the edit window, now that's worked nicely, but can you see there's a shadow around where this is darker? So Click on the right thing. So the easiest thing here is to go to the softness and we can do an internal, we can do an external as well, internal thing. So you just move this up. Oh, my mouse is seeming to be struggling. Oh, there we go. Um, and it's put this extra ring in. And what it's going to do between the red ring and the white ring, it's going to, um, like a gradient, so 
on the white ring um, it's going to be completely transparent on the inside ring it's going to be not transparent at all and it's going to gradiate it in between now if I get it too close to my toes I'm going to start to get um, soft toes so there we go let's see what that looks like okay so it's a lot better um, really that's starting to look like just a normal shadow there um, but there's no reason why you can't take it right out um, you can add extra ones to make it a bit smoother um, and then bring this in get a little bit more around and if you play with it you find you um, you can get quite a natural looking shot when we're looking at it and we're being very critical we could probably see that, that although it looks just like a shadow we could probably say oh yeah maybe that's not a natural shadow frankly when everything's moving and people are watching it and listening to the video I don't think they're going to care um, so there we go so that's that's essentially how you do it so other tips make sure you're recording each clip um, with a gap in between because you need a gap um, to you need at least this much gap for this chap and you need the gap again on this side now what you can do if you mess that up um, so on one of mine I had a guitar and I swung it from side to side and the head actually um, went too close to one of the other takes of me so that was a bit tricky so what you can do in that instance is you can go to the tracker window at the moment everything we've done has been for the entire clip but what you can do is go to the frame then you can use the right and left arrow keys on your keyboard or this thing here and you can see I'm moving through the frames now if I get to here and I decide that actually this needs to come in so perhaps I've got my violin here and I've stuck my bow out um, so I might want to move that in make that a little less transparent so the person next to it doesn't get chopped off for instance and then and you can do it ever so gradually frame by frame and then when you you can go again and then you can bring it back a bit or whatever so it gives you an, a little idea um, now we've just done that very roughly and very quickly so we'll probably actually see so can you see the shadows changing slightly here yeah so I've got a bit of a gate Harry um, but if you look at the final video, have a look for my guitar swinging left to right, and you'll see what looks like the guitar shadow moving across because I've made it the kind of a shape that matches um, the guitar, and I've smoothed it out frame by frame um, for perhaps 20 frames. It's probably only a second or so, um, but it makes all the difference because before the other overlay was on top and was a kind of cutting off the guitar head which wasn't such a good look uh, you don't want to distract people from uh, the fun and the music uh, by having objects disappearing so there we go so so there you go give it a go give it a whirl see how many you can get on uh, I was running out of room in the office maybe with a fisheye lens I'd been able to uh, have a little bit more room um, it's great fun so the main thing is get the light if you get the lighting right everything is a lot easier um, and make sure that when you video it you're looking at where you are on the screen and making sure you're not going to overlap and that you've got enough overlap room in between um, to do the gradient anyway have fun i want to see what you come up with all right bye